Okay guys, here's an update on some seedlings we planted four weeks ago in order to have fall flowers. You might be able to do this too, depending on where you live. Hey everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. We're here to help you become a better gardener. Yeah, and in today's episode, we are planting seedlings that we planted, that we, sorry, we sowed four weeks ago. Yes, and it's yes, fun yes. to see how big they are now. They're yep. ready to go in the ground. They have been kind of ready for a week or two now. Yeah, we've been ready. We've, we've been, been hardening we've been, them off. We've been so kind of busy. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're excited to show you where we're going to plant them. We're going to plant them over in our terrace area terrace. right behind us here. Yep, so, you know, we're, and we'll get into where we're going to place them and the names of things and stuff. Hey, if you want to see the previous video about a month ago, a little over a month ago, uh, yeah. August August 4th, Yes. Um, that's when we filmed um, the planting of these seeds and we went over each seed and what we're doing with it and the name and stuff. So uh, if you want more information on the seedlings in that way and how to plant them and such, go find that video and we'll leave a link down below for that. Yeah, but for now, let's check these up close before we plant them so we yeah. can show you a little more. So guys, here's our seedlings. We planted these again on uh, August 4th. Well, most of them came up. We had some like, what is this, Nasturtium Vesuvius. Um, we, only one of them came up, unfortunately. So, um, but we're, we're happy the one came up. Uh, a couple other ones were splotchy. These two over here, they just didn't make it. They just didn't come up. So guys, we explained this in our previous video for August 4th uh, when we planted all these seeds, but we wanted to tell you again. Uh, you wanna make sure and check each one of these seed packets on the back. It should tell you, if it doesn't tell you on the seed packet, it'll tell you online at the seed supplier. Look for the time to maturity after the seed germinates and maturity is when it flowers, right? That's why we're planting these. So you wanna to look to see how long it's gonna take each seedling from germination to flowering, how long that's gonna take, and then measure those days, if it's 60 days, 50 days, whatever. Then go to your last frost-free date, which you can find at almanac.com under their gardening tab. You just punch in your zip code, it'll tell you when your last date will be before you have your first frost of this, uh, of this fall. And then find that date, work back on the maturity date for each plant, and then you can figure out when you need to plant it, how long it's gonna take for it to flower in your area. So just word of the wise, if you have any questions on that, tell us down below, ask us down below, we'll get right back to you. These containers, these are great containers to store uh, your seeds in. They come, these are actually for photos, if I'm not mistaken. And so they come, each one of these cases comes with so many filled up of these actual little mini cases, and they just clasp and you can stick your and stick your seeds inside there and then they just literally just pop it in this opens up you stick it in you close it up ready to go they're nice airtight yep they look really good um, they, they store really well so we'll have we'll actually have the link down below for this if you're interested if you're going to be uh, storing any seeds like what we have here or if you're going to collect your own seeds and store them this is great to use for any of that so link down below for this okay guys after going over all the seedlings we're gonna take these over and we're gonna get them set up to get them transplanted okay you guys so we're out here in our terrace and the next step is to get these planted so what we did is we grouped them and figured out the different heights of their obviously their mature height of what they're gonna grow to and we kind of placed them around our terrace just to fill in some open areas so those of you that have been watching for a while know that this terrace was recently planted. Everything in here was planted about two months ago, so they're all very small plants. Now in the future, these are all of these perennials will get very big. But for now, we figured we could utilize the space, utilize our full sun area, and just add some fall color in here. So all the seedlings Sean was showing you will all bloom into the fall up until maybe and beyond the first frost for our zone, which is zone 8B. Um, our first frost is slated for uh, November 3rd, so we've got some time. So what we're gonna do is just kinda, what I wanna do, I guess, is show you kinda where we're putting some of the things and why we chose those spots. So if we start in the back row, we have a bunch of our sunflowers that we're gonna place back there. Those are some of the tallest growing plants that we have in, in this um, selection. We also have some cosmos up there on your right. Um, those get up to two to three maybe even five feet tall so those those will be great they'll get tons of sun as you can see we've got some kind of weeding and some grass growing in back there so we're going to clean all that out before we plant all those seedlings um, coming kind of forward over here we've got um, what's called chinese lantern which is an awesome blooming plant it's a kind of a it almost reminds me of like a tomatillo little papery kind of look but it's orange so they look really awesome it's a great fall cut flower 
um, or the stem has all the flowers on it. It would look awesome in a cut arrangement. So we've got those over there. Those get up to maybe two feet or so tall, maybe three feet if they, if they want to. Um, we've also got some white or Leia we're going to kind of mix in and um, get those going over there. So coming further up clo or closer to where I'm sitting right now, we're going to do some of the lower growers, some things that won't shade out the plants behind and around them. A lot of the plants we have in here will keep blooming into the fall. So like these Budleas right here have recently been deadheaded. They probably will rebloom. We've got yarrow and some lavender, which lavender's probably done blooming, but it'll keep keep its form and we, we don't want to shade it up. So we kind of plan that um, accordingly. We're going to add some nasturtium to kind of hang over. You can see this, um, these, this rock wall, they'll kind of hang over like that one is right there. And then moving forward, we're going to plant some groupings of beautiful Zahara starlight um, zinnias. It's one of our favorite zinnias we're growing this year. It's a beautiful white flower with a hot pink and they get up to about a foot and a half tall. So that'll look perfect in this area. And then over here, we've got a large open area. You know, in the future, we're probably gonna add a perennial there. That's kind of my thought. I don't know what Sean's thinking, but um, for now, we're gonna put some peony duchess aster um, annuals right here. So those will grow into the fall and bloom and look beautiful. So that's kind of our plan, you guys. And at this point, Sean and I are gonna dig in and get all of this planted. We're gonna use a trowel if needed to kind of move the, some of the mulch out of the way. We've got some, um, some of our tools here called the Little Dibby. We're going to use those to pop the seedlings out of their little trays carefully. And we're going to get this ready. And then we'll water it in. So guys, we actually got everything planted in here. You can see down below me here and actually up here too, those bare spots um, of dirt, that's where we actually place the plants. We put them in pretty tight. The spacing isn't what actually uh, the seed pack or, or the seed suppliers would call uh, spot right on. Now we wanna just make sure that um, we've got a good flush of growth. Um, we get nice tall flowers and they actually get a chance to flower. So also you can see here too with the bare dirt, we didn't plant, we didn't place more of the mulch back over that, not yet anyway. And the reason we didn't do that uh, is because we don't want to smother the plants. The plants are tiny. A lot of them would get smothered. They wouldn't even be able to, the sunlight wouldn't even be able to reach them if we recovered them or even just put mulch around them. That's just too much right now. So we're leaving it bare as they grow in about another week or two, we'll take the mulch and put it around them because it's all just kind of stacked around them right now. As you can see, they're bermed in a way. So yeah, we're going to water these in. Everything went in really well. Um, we are really tight on space in here. A lot of these perennials that we planted already, they're doing really well. They've filled in so much. So we're really happy with that. Hopefully this was fun for you to watch this. Hey, and also if you have any questions about planting seedlings, about planting seeds, uh, planting seedlings, transplanting plants out of pots or handling more mature plants, check out our book, The First Time Gardener, Growing Plants and Flowers. It's on Amazon. It has a lot of uh, tips and tricks, also step-by-step -step, uh, process, the process to actually place all these different kinds of plants, the seedlings, the seeds, the, the small plants, the big plants. We give steps on actually how to plant each one of those types of plants in our book in chapter four. And so go to Amazon, check out our book, First Time Gardener, growing plants and flowers. Link will be down below. All right, you guys, that's a wrap for today's video. We got everything planted. Yeah. We're happy about it. Really happy. The only concern is we might have some squirrel damage out here because yeah. they've been nuts. So they might, we're yeah. afraid they might dig up the sunflowers like they have been doing all season yeah. so far. It so. started in the spring when we had our first seedlings out and they just they just would go through them every single day and we'd have to come out and replant them every single They're day. So, so. they just kind of like to explore and pull things out. We have raccoons in the yard, so wildlife is gonna be an issue. Yeah. We've got a few things that we can cover some of the seedlings with kind of that will still allow some light to get through and yeah. we can try that, but. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Th these are some things you just can't control. Hopefully this was helpful for you, um, gave you some ideas, helped you out on what you need to do and how you need to do it from our first video and this update video to plant seedlings for late summer flowering, early fall to mid fall flowers to have in your garden to continue and prolong the flowering season. And some of you, depending on where you live, you're gonna to wanna to, um, make sure that you're, you know your first frost-free date, like ours is November 3rd, and count backwards. So you can kind of guess and find out, you know, can you plant some of these things? Um, look at the seed packet, look at the maturity, how long the maturity date. So you can kind of plant or count backwards and kind of figure out how long it's gonna take for those things to flower. Yep. So thanks for being here, you guys. If you have any comments or questions, any at all, leave them down below for us. We love hearing from you. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you get updates on our latest videos. Yeah, that's a wrap. Thank you guys for being here Thank and for you. watching and being with us today. And we'll see you in the next video. Yep. See you next video. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.